Let's take a look at what's new in version 2.0 of the Dolby Atmos Album Assembler. One of the key features in this update is the ability to create crossfades between Dolby Atmos clips. The Album Assembler handles both the audio and metadata involved in the crossfade. To create a crossfade, you must trim material from one or both participating clips and join them on the timeline touching end to end. If a crossfade can be created, the crossfade handle will be displayed in the lower corners of the clips. Hover over the crossfade handle and click and drag the crossfade icon to create the crossfade. Hold the option key to create a symmetrical crossfade. To adjust the crossfade, click and drag from one of the lower corners. The maximum duration for a crossfade is 30 seconds and the minimum duration is one millisecond. Reducing the crossfade to less than the minimum duration will delete the crossfade. A crossfade can also be deleted by selecting the crossfade and pressing the delete key, right clicking the crossfade and clicking remove crossfade, or selecting the crossfade and navigating to edit remove selected. Crossfade removal can be undone by pressing command Z or navigating to edit undo. Redo the removal by pressing command shift Z or navigating to edit redo. The album assembler supports a single level of undo redo for all clip movement and editing functions. In slip mode, moving a clip will change the length of the crossfade, deleting the crossfade if the move exceeds or falls below the crossfade size limits. Clips with crossfades cannot be moved in snap or shuffle modes. Once a crossfade has been created, it will be selected and information about the crossfade will be displayed in the crossfade panel. This includes start, end, duration, midpoint, and the clips involved. The crossfade panel is also where you control channel mapping options for the project. You can choose between optimized for artifact free and preserved channel layout, and the option you select for the first crossfade will apply to all crossfades in the project. Once there are two or more crossfades in a project, this setting cannot be changed. To change the setting, remove all but one crossfade. Optimize for Artifact Free prioritizes audio quality by finding optimal channel mapping between the two clips, taking into account the audio and metadata of all channels in the clips. This may reorder the channels within the clips and may add silent channels on either side of the crossfade. Preserved Channel Layout will maintain the channel count and layout of both clips in the crossfade whenever possible, but may add silent channels to match the largest clip in the crossfade. This mode is more likely to result in audio artifacts resulting from potential metadata mismatches and transitions. For both modes, the positional metadata transition point of the crossfade will be set at the beginning, middle, or end of the crossfade per channel based on audio and metadata analysis. If a crossfade may have audible artifacts, it will be highlighted yellow, and a warning message will be displayed in the crossfade panel. Hover over the warning icon for more information about the potential artifacts. There are two types of potential artifact warnings, binaural and positional. There may be artifact warnings without any audible artifacts, so it is recommended to critically listen to any crossfades with warnings. For binaural artifact warnings, monitoring the binaural output on headphones is recommended. For positional artifact warnings, monitoring on speakers is recommended. Other updates in this release include a single level of undo redo for all clip movement and editing functions, bed export optimization, and updated OS compatibility. For a complete list of the updates in this version, refer to the release notes, user's guide, and keyboard shortcuts PDFs included with the installer. For more information on working in Dolby Atmos, visit the Dolby Atmos knowledge base and forums.